Ryan here from Premier Automotive Diagnostics. So we're gonna discuss gasoline direct injection. So we've got a car here, 2014 Audi A4, uh, 2.0 liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder. Um, direct injection is a new technology, well, it's not a new technology, but it's being implemented into the automotive world and has been for several years. Uh, last statistic I read, Direct injection technology accounted for approximately 30% of new cars being manufactured. Uh, that percentage will continue to increase uh, as years come by, uh, 50%, 60, 70%, and on, on and on. So uh, I don't see it going away anytime soon. So for these older vehicles that are uh, some of the earliest ones with direct injection, uh, we're starting to see the problems that occur uh, with direct injection vehicles. Um, it's problems that can be avoided. We just got to um, uh, just keep on the maintenance. So, for example, this one came in, actually it was towed in, uh, was check engine light, uh, several codes, uh, fault codes stored. There was like a um, traction control light, uh, but it, it was in like a, a limp home mode. So uh, it, would, it would start and run, but it just had no power. Misfires, misfires, misfires. Okay, towed in. So I found out that as most of these direct injected cars are, uh, this particular engine has between 50 and 60,000 miles on it. Uh, they get a lot of carbon buildup on the back of the intake valves. Okay, so what we're used to is the, um, let me get an intake here. This is the intake manifold. What we're used to is the fuel injector being housed in the intake manifold here squirting gasoline into the runner and gasoline air mixture, fuel air mixture going into the intake. All right, so that fuel air mixture keeps the intake valves, which are in here, clean. Well, now with direct injection, these are the fuel injectors now. They've moved them from the intake, implemented them directly into the cylinder head. So now the fuel is dispersed directly into the cylinder and not on the back of the intake valve. So these valves, get they're dirty. They just get carbon build up. All right. So we're gonna show you, uh, before we clean any of them, a little video from our borescope here and try to get a visual on what the back of these intake valves look like. Okay, yeah, you can see the carbon build up there. That's one cylinder. We'll move to the next one. A lot of carbon buildup. Now, I've certainly seen a lot worse than this one. But you can see, there's a chunk of carbon there. So what happens is that carbon gets stuck between the valve and the cylinder head surface around the edge. So the valve's not able to close all the way, causing these vacuum leaks, causing a rich code, causing misfires. So you can see the carbon buildup. Move on to another one. A lot of carbon on the wall. All right, so this is cylinder three. This is one of the misfires, but you can see here on the screen all the carbon buildup. Now you got a smooth surface here, which is the way the entire valve should be. Now you got this crater looking surface and that's just, that's carbon buildup, okay? It's naturally occurring, it's gonna happen. It's just the way the system's designed, but what we're trying to do is with the proper maintenance schedule, we can eliminate this from happening. Okay, so now let's talk, uh, actually let's go back over here to these intake runner dividers. Let me take you back to the engine. So this is where they, they slide into the intake runner, just like that, and then the intake manifold goes over top of them. So these sit in there, and this is the same carbon buildup that's on the top of those valves. Just like that. So that's what we're fighting. That's what we're dealing with. And all four of them are the same way. That's what's causing our check engine lights. That's what's robbing us of power, reducing our fuel mileage and oil consumption. We got rid of that. So um, for this particular vehicle, we're gonna clean these up. We're gonna clean the back of those valves. Uh, we're gonna replace the spark plugs. And um, a way to do that, that'll be another video, maybe another little attachment um, or supplement. 
All right, let's pick up where we left off. Okay, so to clean these intake valves, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, uh, a, a cleaner here that uh, dissolves the carbon. So this particular brand, uh, CRC, this is gasoline direct injection. So intake valve and turbo cleaner. Uh, this is what we'll spray on the back of the valves. Uh, there's a lot of, it's not just a spray and it just magically dissolves and pulls some David Copperfield stuff. So we've got to, we still have to do some scrubbing. Um, still have to do some uh, prodding around in there with a pick. We'll have like a um, pick similar to this maybe, maybe with a different end on it. But we'll go in down in there with a pick with a little brush uh, and we'll get all that carbon out um, and of course spray some more in there, clean it out, make it really nice looking. Um, sometimes we use like a, um, an abrasive uh, cleaner or like walnut shells. So whatever route we take to clean the back of these valves, we're gonna make sure it's right. Put it all back together, clear the fault codes, and this car will be 100%. So what I'm gonna suggest to the owner of this vehicle is moving forward, and what I'm gonna suggest to every uh, person that owns a direct injection engine uh, in their car is that we perform a maintenance service for these vehicles every 15 to no more than 30,000 miles. So from 15 to 30,000 miles, every interval, we need to perform a maintenance uh, to clean the back of the valves to keep this from happening. So there's our, um, there's our little uh, demo for the day for direct injection. If that's what you have, you're having check engine lights, come see us, we'll take care of it.